Welcome back. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make your own holiday decorations using a 3D printer. But before we get into it, I just wanna thank SolidWorks and the 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers platform for sponsoring this video. So I'm gonna show you how you can make a flat pack ornament using X Design, and then I'll show you a few other designs that I've made using a similar method. Now the idea here is that when the holidays are over, you can take these decorations apart and then they flatten down for easier storage. So basically you have two halves where one of them has a divot and the other has this matching indentation so you can slide the two pieces together and they click into place. And for the rest of the ornament, I'm thinking about three inches across and I'm gonna go with a stripe design, sort of like a candy cane. Now to make this, I have 3D Experience SolidWorks for Maker's X Design, which is fully cloud-based so you don't need to worry about whether or not your computer can run a CAD program and you can just access your files from any browser. So I'm gonna start off by making two circles that are three inches across. Also, I'm gonna make sure that they're equidistant across the origin, which will be important later. First, I'm gonna make the clipping mechanism that holds them together and then the design so that we have a base that can be customized however you want. All right, so first I'm gonna draw a line from the center of one circle down to the bottom to make the middle of the slot where the two halves will meet. Now this just needs to be a little bit bigger than the thickness of each half. Since I'm going with three millimeter ornaments, I'm gonna make the slot 3.2 millimeters just to account for any tolerances when printing. Now this might be a tight fit depending on your printer, but I've done some testing and I know that I have about 0.15 to 0.2 millimeters for the tolerance of mine. Um, but 3D printing is all about iteration, so you should definitely test it and see what you can get from yours. Now that I have the first slot, I can just go ahead and repeat that exact same process just on the top half of the other circle. And then I can go ahead to making the actual clipping mechanism that holds these together. Now this might be a little confusing, but once you see it and like how the shapes come together, it does make a little bit more sense. So for the first half, I'm gonna make a rectangle that's three millimeters tall centered right at the top of the slot and then another rectangle that's 3.25 millimeters tall above that. And on the other circle, I'm gonna extend the slot down by 1.25 millimeters below the center of the circle. Then I'll make two 0.35 by 1.25 millimeter rectangles inside the slot. And I'm just gonna to wanna to make sure that they're 2.5 millimeters away from the center of the circle and not the extension that I just added. This should give us the basic geometry of how these two have slide and clip together. Now, all we need to add aside from the actual design is some way to hang this. So I'm just gonna make a seven by three millimeter rectangle at the top and then offset that by 1.5 millimeters to make a slot for a ribbon. And now that I have the basic shape, I can just go ahead and extrude that three millimeters. Before moving on though, I'm just gonna add a chamfer to the middle part of the left circle. So there's kind of a ramp when the two halves come together. And on the other side, I'm gonna add some fillets to round over those bumps so that it's easier to slide them past the chamfers that we just made. And like I mentioned earlier, this is all about iteration. I did not get these numbers right on the first try. It took uh, a, a few iterations. The first version was just a bit too tight and didn't fit together fully, so one piece broke. The second version fit together, but the bottom wasn't flush and that just bothered me a little bit. And the third version fit perfectly together, but the hanging point was too low, so I ended up having to raise that so it wasn't covered by the second half of the ornament. Now that we have a mechanism that lets these two halves slide and clip together, we can make the actual design. And feel free to be as creative as you want here, like make something crazy. But like I mentioned earlier, I'm just gonna make a simple stripe design, kind of like a candy cane. To start with, I'm just gonna make a sketch on the top of the circles and project the geometry so that I have that as a reference. Then I'm gonna draw some lines and get a good layout for one half of the first circle. Now that I have something I like, I'm just gonna draw some construction lines down the middle of each circle and then one that's halfway between the two of them. This is just gonna let me mirror the design that I already made across the rest of my ornament so that if I made any tweaks to the first version, the rest are automatically updated and I wouldn't have to modify them all individually. Which is why I did that first step of centering the circles on the origin. It just made this go a little bit quicker and also it's easier to update the design if I wanna change something later on. Now I can just extrude cut the patterns from my ornament and it's ready to print out. But before I do that, I'm gonna take a sec to thank the sponsor of this video, SolidWorks, with their 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers platform, which includes X Design that I've been using here for a fully cloud-based experience, X Shape for more organic modeling, and a ton of other tools, including a full version of SolidWorks that you can install locally, all for $9.99 a month or $99 a year. There'll be a link down below the like button for 20% off when you first buy it. Personally, I really like cloud-based CAD, especially with how well X Design runs on my iPad. Being able to pinch to zoom and rotate around my models just feels so much more natural and intuitive. Also, if I'm working out of like a coffee shop, there's usually Wi-Fi, 
and this is much more portable as opposed to my full laptop. Now, I ended up printing this on the Prusa Mini in a nice dark green and Protopass's glitter red. And they both look great, especially when I use one of each color for this dual tone ornament. And since these print flat as two halves, they're relatively quick. So each one on the Mini took just over an hour. I also ended up using the AMS on the Bamboo Lab X1 to make a version that's actually candy cane colored with some Hatchbox white and that same Proto Pasta glitter red. And like I mentioned earlier, once you get the tolerances down, you can flat pack pretty much anything. So I made this triangular kind of icicle inspired ornament along with a version that has no top and bottom layers. So you get this really cool pattern from the visible infill. And I also found a snowflake online and adapted it to my design, which looks really cool especially with the little red accents that I added using the AMS. But moving away from the ornaments, I also made this little tree along with a stand for it. Overall, this is a really fun way to make your own holiday decorations using a 3D printer. If you make something cool of your own, please do tag me, I'd love to see it. And if you wanna print out any of the designs I showed in this video, they'll all be on printables with links down in the description. Also, whether you use SolidWorks Experience for Makers or another CAD platform, you should definitely check out their Made in 3D online community, which is a great way to connect with other makers, share your work, learn some tips and tricks, and just get inspired by all the cool projects that people are doing out there. Also, be sure to like and subscribe down below for more videos about 3D printing, making, and other cool DIY projects. Here's a video about making a dice case, and here's a video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like the best.